told what I should do. And I also don't like this word, always. I'm like a kid, I ask why? And then I go off and do something else, which is typical. And I try and make them as natural as I can. I've got heaps of uh, old weather boards, old fence palings. I've got pieces that I've cut from plum trees and apple trees and everything else I could use, but I like driftwood. I live across the, uh, the road from one beach and I have plenty of places where things get washed down from, uh, from the rivers in floods. I hose them off, I put them in a, in a plastic garbage bin and soak them and they sit in a pile on a, on a couple of pallets. It started out as one pallet, now I think I have three. So whenever I have an orchid that I feel like uh, mounting, I've got plenty, plenty of things to choose from. And uh, where are the other long ones? I use them up already. Ah, there they are. And, uh, I have, I forget how many meters of pipe hanging in my greenhouse, and I've got things from zygocactus and everything else hanging all over the place. I think there's about 32 meters of pipe hanging in a six meter by seven meter greenhouse. So I can hang these things up everywhere. And uh, when I have an orchid, I just try and look through my pile of, of pieces, and sometimes I have to prepare them and sometimes they're all ready to go. I have two techniques that I use. This one, I simply get one of my drill bits, bend up these little S-shaped hooks, drill in, try not to put the, uh, the drill bit all the way through, because I don't like the looks of that. And that makes them really, really solid, very strong, and again, it's a fairly, fairly natural presentation. So this was one that had uh, a Talansia on, so I'll pass that around so you can have a closer look at the way I put the hooks on the back. How do you get them to stay there if they don't come out? The holes are not very big. I actually have to tap them in and sometimes if they're a little okay. bit loose I put a bit of super glue. Just okay. a few drops. And this one's uh, flexulosum. So I'll pass that around. Try not to knock it around too much, but you can have a closer look at that. And when I'm tying off on the, on the mount, sometimes, I, or most of the time, I tie off on the wire. Sometimes I can tie it off on the hook, but on this one, where I'm going to mount that, uh, that kingianum, which is about where I want to put it there, everybody says, oh, put it there, put it there. No, because then you take so much away from the interesting quality of the driftwood. And sometimes I happen to get a nice one, it just seems like it wants to sit there. Now, when you're, when you're tying off, you can do all kinds of you know, complicated knots, but the easy way is just to go, and you do a little backhand, little backhand, two or three times. You can play tug of war with it all day long. It's not going to come off. Two is enough to make it strong, but I always do one or two extras, and uh, that won't slip. I can, I can take that home. I could probably drive to Penguin with that, and it wouldn't uh, come loose. The rope might break. Just do that again, show us how you done it. Hmm? Just do it again, show us how you done it. Slow motion. Yes, yeah, slow motion. Just backhand. Okay, yeah. It's basically a reef knot, but I just do one or two more turns. Oh, not the reef knot. That's what I was taught. This comes from <laughs> That's what a reef knot. growing up as a boy scout. <laughs> Got to have a figure eight. <laughs> you know, for me, knots, this is what I do. You know, just, just throw it over me. Little backhand turn, and there it is. So, that's how easy that is. You can play around with the rope if you want. And I will tutor you as best I can. So, let's get down to business.
Jeff is a welder. If anybody wants to make one of these, ask him. <laughs> because while I'm drilling through a piece of driftwood like that, drill bits like this don't do the job very well. And uh, I had this set that I brought back from visiting family in Norway, but even this doesn't do the job. It'll do the job for something like this, but even here, it's not long enough. What, but, the, 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 uh, what holds it on the other end? What if I can shove it through? Oh, there it is. Now it's going to bend it up too much. No, not going to come through. It's in there well and truly. And uh, they just go through, and if you look closely, you'll see where. I've drilled a little secondary hole and then bent it into a hook and then I pull it through with that dropping into the hole. It's not going to fall apart. It's not going to pull through. Not until the whole piece of driftwood rots away. And I tend to look for a hardwood. So even, even the mounts that I make for uh, my, um, my uh, elk horns and stag horns I'm now trying to collect hardwood because I've been using uh, pallet wood. Okay, let's do one. I'm probably going to have to um, hold it in my lap. Let's, um, let's see what I've got. <laughs> when I'm cutting the, cutting the wire, you need a few basic bits. And this cuts really well. And I also don't like the sharp ends on my wires. So I, I file them off. If I make a lot, and I'm usually making a half dozen or, or more at a time, I fire up my, uh, my belt sander. This is the one I was thinking about. And uh, occasionally I'll mount uh, a Lelia or a Catlia. Um, some, some of them do really well, and some don't. So, here we are. Sometimes I will, uh, I will use some... Cut that. Sometimes I'll use some, some bits of hessian to help hold them in place. But I've seen people use uh, everything under the sun to attach orchids. I've watched video clips from Southeast Asia, and inevitably, one of them is going to have these bright colored plastic artificial raffia wrapping their, uh, their orchid, mounting on their tree or whatever. I hate to say it, it just doesn't appeal to me at all. Yeah, I just don't like the looks of that. I'm not too concerned about that. I just packed, packed this with the um, with a fine fine mix. Yeah, I can be a bit rough sometimes, but. Um, now, probably about like that. But because I didn't want my, my line attached here, and I've already put a label on it, then uh, it's a good idea to have your fish line ready. Now, the first time I did one, it was just a spool of fish line. And if you drop it, and the big spool happens to be, what's it, about a thousand meters? You drop that on the floor. Now, on the back way. of this one, there's just a little tiny carpet tack. So, let's see if I can get this without dropping it. Because usually, there's one loop. Usually, I do it on the, not king loose. My eyesight's not all that good. 
Not without my reading glasses. So I'll do two loops here and try and get it over without it coming loose. There we go. So, that's it, ready to go. Nice living sphagnum moss, if you can get it, is uh, probably the best. Now I've been told, always use bush moss. One guy, I should even refer to uh, the sex of the person. Always and should. Almost, it's almost in the same sentence. And I go, ah, sorry. <laughs> Not impressed. Now, I could cover all the roots, but uh, these long fibrous ones, quite a few of them are, are dead. But I don't cut them all off because of that lovely little fibrous, fibrous bit down through the middle of them which helps uh, attach them when I wrap some uh, fish line around. I usually do this on my lap. And uh, all of my towels and blankets in the greenhouse have a special marking because inevitably, if I sit down long enough and my dog is anywhere nearby, he's gonna want to sit with me. So I always have markings so I can keep track of, uh, of which side, because inevitably, this little Jack Russell is going to be digging around, looking for things, smelling things, and it's just a dirt floor with brick laid over the dirt. So it keeps the humidity fairly, fairly high. Now sometimes, I might go through. No, yeah, maybe. I'll go through, through once or twice. I like the fish line because you can cut it off and it's not going to be a major distraction. Yeah, I think so. One more for good luck. Put it on the back, hang it up so I can use two hands again. And uh, where's my tack? There it is. I was looking in my shed for the brass nails. That Did worked out. Well? Oh, I bumped it. See, this is what happens if you have a large spool. And this is just inspired by uh, the, uh, the fly time jigs that they use for fishing. And uh, I prefer to actually tie it on over the uh, the wire on the top. But I didn't want wire or the fish line draping up and down there. Three turns, make sure it drops on, cut it off. And Bob's your uncle. I did have an Uncle Bob. He's died. They all spoil it. This one would have been my mother's 100th birthday yesterday. Yeah, she spoiled it. Oh, you're kidding. I hope that's the other tail. Oh, guess what I did? With my poor eyesight, I cut too close. No. If I would have left that nail out just a little bit longer, it would have been so much easier. There, I think I got it on. Have I gone over 10 minutes, Fred? No. He still hasn't thrown anything at me yet. Still got a minute left. <laughs> <coughs> he hasn't rung the cowbell either. I'm not going to cut this now. I'm going to wait until I have my reading glasses on and make sure I don't cut it too short. Because uh, nothing worse than having them fall off. So this one, I'm just going to wind back up after we uh, turn off the video. Wind it back up. And that's just a piece of uh, plastic tubing from a ballpoint pen refill. A couple of beads 
glued onto this, uh, this piece of wire. So pass that around and I'll sort out this 